The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday morning. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we're kicking things off with negative prices, and that's after quite the decline yesterday from the gains we had early. Right now, you're trading negative by 10 points. That's a quarter percent of the S&Ps at 41.31. You zoom in on the action. We were as low as about 41.23 just about an hour ago, coming into 8 a.m. That matches up to the lows we had pretty much at the session close yesterday. And you look at the action that we had on Friday for the jobs number, we kick off that number at 4160. You actually make it to almost 4190 early in the session yesterday. And just like that, we're down to 4130. The plunge that we had on that jobs number almost got to 4100. You're talking about about 4105 for that number. NASDAQ 100, you're down about six tenths percent. I go over all those numbers because the NASDAQ 100, we are below that level. We're basically at the lows that you had from the Jobs Friday number acceleration. You make it up to 13,419, just like that. We're 300 points below where we were trading at less than 24 hours ago in the NASDAQ. Some of the big bank stocks, you had some big pullbacks yesterday, man, across the board on some of the biggest equities in the world. We'll jump over those in a moment. You got the Dow right now, basically flat. You see the action in the Dow. Dow, where we were coming into the jobs number, right? Interesting, so you got the NASDAQ 100, basically at the lows of where you spiked on the jobs number. You have the Dow where we were coming into that number. S&P is just below where we were. Russell right now, you're basically sitting where we were as well. The Russell basically flat as well. Bitcoin, you're down 800 bucks. You make it to 24,300 yesterday. You lose about 1100 bucks from that price, 23,200. How about crude catching a little bit of a bid, man? 87 bucks on Friday, almost got 87 bucks yesterday. Just like that, we're at 92 bucks. And you're up about $3, just over the last about four to five hours in that crude contract. Taking a look at crude. I mean, can't deny it. We got below a critical area of support there for crude. You make it down to 87 handle, back to 92. We'll see how crude behaves. But lower prices in the energy market. Cannot deny that, at least in the short term. Natural gas. Check out that chart, right? Talk about a double top, man. 975. We make that price on July 26th. We're currently trading at 780. You're up another 21 cents right now for natural gas. You talk about some moves, man. Last week up to 848. Gold's catching a bid this morning. Up to 181410. You're up nine dollars on gold. Gold back above where you were in terms of the price action on the jobs Friday. Interesting in terms of where all these markets are, considering where we were on Friday. Uh the tenure. Almost sitting at the low that we got on that initial move. You're talking about a yield right now, 2.79%, we'll call it. Almost 2.8%. Uh, 2.79, the yield on the 10-year. You get the 30-year right now, not quite the same deal, right? I mean, interesting, you usually have the 30-year moving a lot more. Right now, we have the 10-year negative 9 ticks. You only have the 30-year negative 7 ticks. It's usually the other way around. If you got the 10-year negative 10 ticks, you usually get the 30-year negative 20 or 30 ticks, uh, almost maybe a full point sometimes. You get that type of movement. Nonetheless, we jump over to the VIX. 21.19, we almost got a 19 handle on Friday. You make it to 20.76. I keep bringing it up. At some point, we're going to get a spike, folks. We have a lot of volatility in this market, and we have a lot of data coming down the line. And I can't imagine that the VIX just fades into oblivion as we try and tame 9.1% inflation. And we try and do it in a job market that's gaining 500,000 jobs a month with unemployment at 3.5%. It's a tough one to wrap your head around when you run those numbers like that. Let's jump into some of those FANG stocks yesterday, man, because this market, you check out the NASDAQ 100, as I mentioned, you're talking about more than 2% from where we were on the highs. And that's what's going to happen when you get these types of moves, man. Apple. Apple gives up basically three dollars during the day i always talk about the numbers because they are crazy it's about 50 billion dollars in market cap folks five zero 50 billion dollars in market cap apple's going to open down another dollar today okay basically just in line with the nasdaq 100 down about six tenths percent apple going to do the same uh even amazon talk about an acceleration man 
Amazon's been on quite a run. You open, you spike to 144.23, you give it back to 139. Now here's the deal, as I'm jumping around. You can't run like this forever, folks. Even if you think the lows are in, okay, in this market, putting things back on a daily. Even if you think the lows are in in this market, you have a stock like Amazon that just traded from 106 to 144 in the span of less than a month, okay? Even taking, now you could say that was an A to B, you got the A leg at 106, you got the B leg on Amazon at 125, so you're talking about almost a 20 point A to B leg. You go from 115, you blow past that, you almost got a one to 1.618, right? I think you did. Let's see, let's see if I can throw this on here quick enough. No, it's not, this is the one I want. Okay, didn't quite make it to a 1 to 1.618, right? You had a 20 point A to B leg, you make it above the full projection, you make it up to 144. The 618 would have been 147 though, you make it up to 144. Uh, nonetheless, taking that off, the real point of this is from July 13th, adding that drawing, taking a look at the Fibonacci retracement, you're talking about a natural move, folks. A 382 retracement brings you back below 130, okay? So we're trading at 139 right now. Keep that in mind across the market. Uh, that's Amazon for you. We went over Apple. They all did it. You jump over to Microsoft shares, 285 to the below 280. You jump over to Google shares, to 120 down to 118. Uh, Tesla's going to be splitting three for one. That's going to come into fruition August 25th, I think. They'll go three for one. Tesla trades down, what, $40 from the spike high? Really interesting action when you get a spike on the open. And man, it just gives it up just like that, just that quick across the board. All right, let's jump into some of the headlines we got pulled up here this morning. We'll kick it off with, how about a little home, home listings? Check it out. Home inventory, we'll get the headline there, soars as record rate with U.S. buyers pulling back. Slowing demand means more properties are being left on the market. We've talked about... Uh, whether it's going underpriced, right? Whether it's uh, having a price down. Markets didn't see that happening in many times in the last couple of years. Buyers, some negotiating power. My dad and Bestford do a great program on Fridays, folks, from three till four, where they talk about real estate. My dad brings Bestford on. Uh, and one of the things that they've been talking about, that Bestford's talk about, is people are afraid to go in under asking because for so long, wasn't even close, man. You want to get a house, you go in at least somewhere above ask, asking. Uh, and that's just not the case anymore. Do not be afraid to go in under asking. You're going to see headlines like this popping up left and right. And that doesn't mean that prices are going to crater, okay? But it does mean that it's a market where there will be negotiations. And even, I mean, what I say to people is, that, you know, with the, the run that we've had in home prices, folks, I think a lot of people would just be happy if they just settled like this for a year, right? If they just settled like this for a year or two. If we have inflation raging, assets go up in inflation, folks, because the dollar's worth less, okay? Assets go up in value. Everything's correlated in some degree. Things get out of whack, they do. But if milk, bread, and milk, bread, and it used to be milk, bread, and cigarettes, right? That's what my dad used to say. He'd, he'd go down for, uh, I think, a quarter and go down to the store and get milk, bread, and cigarettes. Thankfully, that's not the case anymore. We'll say, we'll sell milk, bread, and avocados. How about that? If that costs you four or five dollars, it's going to correlate to a house. Stay tuned, folks. When we come back, talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Network. Be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P futures right now, negative by 13 points. We're trading at 41.29. We're just under the lows that we had yesterday afternoon. S&Ps coming into almost that low you had on Friday's acceleration. NASDAQ 100, you're negative by 91 points. You're right at Friday's low after that jobs number. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here at Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network with Fast Market. Your host, Kevin Hicks, Tom White, the whole team at TD Ameritrade Network, they walk you through the day's market action, folks, and they set up hypothetical trade setups. They're usually breaking down three different equities throughout the program. Every single trade they set up, folks, defined risk using options. Check it out every day at 12 noon Eastern time. Kevin Hinks, a lot's happened since we talked to you last Thursday, man. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, we have uh, consumed and digested quite a bit of information over the last couple of days. Today, however, dry powder day, right? Uh, traders will be waiting uh, for tomorrow's CPI number. It's going to be a big one. One way or another, it'll be a big one. It'll be a market-moving event. The expectations now, after 1.3% a month ago, they're looking at uh, just up 0.2% this month. So we'll see what that happens. But, Tommy, the potential for disappointment is set up in what the core is looking like. The year-over-year -year core is still expected to sit at or near around 6%. So even though the headline numbers that might be reflecting lower crude oil, lower grain prices, lower overall food and energy might be uh, diluted by a high core in, in terms of CPI. So it's going to be an interesting number. That, you know, that, that, that's for sure, Tommy. We got a look at inflation this morning with productivity and cost that came out. They were lower but not as low as expected. So we're looking at that. NFIB was, I guess, the best way to describe the NFIB number is before you can start going up, you got to stop going down, Tommy. And so the NFIB number has at least firmed up, even though it's still below the 
48 year average of 98 at 89.9. So things are uh, firming here in terms of economic data. Earnings, a little light in terms of headline numbers, but or headline companies, but certainly Disney tomorrow will be a high profile name. Today, Tommy, we're going to look at Wynn Resorts, a good China proxy, if you're looking at that, right? Why? Because they make most of their money in Macau. And then, like Foley will do a presentation on Coinbase. And then we're going to look at, we're trying to figure out what's the best one to trade in, in third segment right now. Maybe Roblox, maybe Akamai. We're looking at a bunch of names r- right now. We're in, in deep discussion, Tommy. It's pretty amazing when you I pull up those charts, Kevin, as you're talking about them. Win, what was that recent low? My goodness. Recently trading at somewhere around $50. You're at 65 Last year you were at 140 uh, Just remarkable pullbacks across the board. I wanted to jump back as you talked about some great analysis on the CPI number coming out tomorrow. Uh, I wanted to get your take, Kevin. So we get the jobs number that's a bang out number, 500,000 plus. We got unemployment at 3.5%. The market accelerates lower. You may think that because that may be forcing the Fed's hand to say, hold on a second, maybe the economy is not calming and inflation will still be a problem that the Fed will have to hamper and they might be able to if there's so much strength in the jobs market. But then what happens? We rebound. We rebound into yesterday morning. Then we get a NVIDIA uh, right. guidance that was just pretty abysmal yesterday before the market. And still, Kevin, to get to the question, the NASDAQ 100 was higher Monday than when it was when you came into Friday morning. Now, we had a sell-off. We're below that level right now. We're still within 1% to 2% of that number. What was your take as that market? Because I was um, – remarkable action is the way I put it, you know, in terms of we get such a bang-out jobs number. And listen, we want a strong economy, man, but not if it comes with the inflation number, right? Um, and then you get the NVIDIA revision, and still the we had the FANG stocks just popping higher yesterday, and they're still a pretty relatively, you know, good levels overall in the context. What was your take on Friday to Monday action? I was pretty perplexed by it. Well, the Friday uh, jobs number was interesting in terms of really strong jobs, right? Unemployment kicks down, but hold on a minute. Before you get excited about a 3.5% uh, unemployment rate, the labor force participation rate ticked down. That is concerning within that that number. So the the 3.5% the, the I discount that because the, the, because people actually leaving the the job market that's concerning there. Now let's get to the inflation data. The wages were firm and higher and and better than expected. That's what moved yields so dramatically higher dur- during the day. So the inflation, you know, it's almost Tommy when you get the jobs data, you break it down into strength of the economy, inflation. You can really get something for everybody there. So I thought that was that mixed number. It was a little inflationary, strong, but it definitely gave the Fed an all-go green light for the next Fed meeting. Now, let's get to Monday. Monday started off looking pretty strong, right, as the uh, overall market started to look at that jobs number as pretty positive. Then NVIDIA comes out. And NVIDIA talks about weakness in gaming and pretty big down. You know, they, their earnings come out the 24th, Tommy, and they did the responsible thing. When they saw a dramatically different number, they announced it as soon as possible. So $8.1 billion in revenue down to 6.7. That is a big drop in revenue for the quarter. So and, and the reasons they gave it? overall macro and gaming weakness well that led right into as you know microsoft which has got xbox and is is buying a video game company so that led to weakness there and then the market overall i think because of the size of that read into a little overall economic weakness tommy and the market just softened slightly yeah it was it was wild action man i think the and again a great breakdown man the numbers were staggering the revision i was i was i was yeah. shocked that that we even got a thrust on the way, uh, even just for the few minutes as the market opened, Kevin, uh, before it traded lower. The gaming, I think they went from $3 billion to $2 billion. Imagine running a segment of a business, folks, and you're supposed to take in $3 billion, 
And guess what? You're going to take in $2 billion. It's like, wow, man, quite quite a revision in a big way. Well, Kevin, we appreciate you taking the time on a busy week, man. I guess it all boils down to CPI in one way, because if it's data dependent on the Fed, we got a super strong economy. So I guess all that matters is what's happening with inflation. We get some big numbers tomorrow. Uh, we'll be watching and we'll be checking out the program Fast Market at 12 today, man. I appreciate it. You have a great one. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Be well. Always a pleasure, man. You as well. Folks, check it out. 12 noon Eastern time. You heard it. They'll be talking about three great stocks. Win, man. China, Macau, uh, the gambling hub. It is amazing what they spend on gambling. I got to get the metrics in terms of what Macau gambling is versus Vegas. Because, folks, Vegas is becoming uh, an entertainment family vacation hub, you know, where, where they make more money just from uh, the services of being out there, whether it's hotel, shows, food, than they do from gambling itself. That, that, that town used to be all gambling, man. Haven't made it out there in a little while. Got to make it back. Uh, maybe I'll bring little Tommy in there. They got some of the most beautiful pools in the world, man, um, out in Las Vegas. S&Ps, folks, you're negative by 11. You had a great take from Kevin, breaking down the day's action from Friday to Monday. We spiked to 41.88. That NVIDIA revision, man, pay attention because gaming – that gaming sector alone, supposed to be three billion? Nope, two billion, just like that. Folks, that's like in a short period of time. You're talking about guidance that they had for the next quarter. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got three minutes to the opening bell. I'll be right back. We'll take a look at some of the other equities that are moving today. We'll be right back. booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you're catching a little bit of a bid right now. S and P's come into the open. You catch a little bit of a spike. We're negative by five points. Nasdaq 100, negative by 77. You get the Dow up 18. Russell, negative by nine points right now. That's Russell negative by about half a percent in par with the Nasdaq 100. Interesting action. Okay, jumping back to the home home listings article that I was talking about. Just some of the statistics I want to go over of that article. Inventory of listings increased at a record rate in July. These things do matter, folks, all right? It's amazing how many different variables are moving at an extreme rate right now. That is what is so remarkable about this market, okay? You have in inflation soaring, which assets should go up in value when inflation soars, right? Because the dollar is worth less. Therefore, you need to spend more of those dollars to get the same amount of goods or assets, which should be correlated in some degree, okay? They get out of whack, but usually they, they regress to the mean in some degree. Uh, so assets should be going up at the same level. The people who really get hurt are the people who are in cash, right? The people who are on a fixed income. Um, maybe you're on an annuity. I mean, people who are buying annuities at super low interest rates, they were very expensive because you're not getting any type of a yield on that upfront present value that you put up in dollars, okay? And you're locking in a fixed income payment with an upfront present value based on a very low yield, and then you come into a rip-roaring inflation that we've never seen before, and all of a sudden, that fixed income that you locked in with a present cost is destroyed, by 9%, 9%, it doesn't take a lot of years of 9%, folks, to destroy the value of a fixed income payment, right? I mean, think about how that happens, as opposed to, right, if you had invested in assets, which have just spiked dramatically, real estate, uh, stock market, most of all, um, real estate, most of all. So, listings increasing at a record rate. I say this because normally this would be very, very bearish, right? Interest rates would be very bearish on the price of homes. Inventory listings, very bearish on the price of homes. Uh, the number of prices having to come down that they're offering, very bearish. But guess what? We got inflation rip roaring. We have an undersupply of houses. That stuff matters. We have rent going through the roof, okay? They're conflicting data points in terms of the influence going on. Now, you get into the numbers. Median list price in July, 449000 still up 17% from a year earlier, close to the all-time high in June. Uh, yes, new listings last month contracted for the first time since March, down 2.8% from a year earlier. Some owners are reconsidering their plans to list with the market shift. Nonetheless, interesting action. All right, jumping around to a couple other stories. So we'll start it off with leveraged ETFs. My dad had a great interview with Dave Mazza from Direction Shares yesterday, folks. They are a sponsor. You can check out their link on the front page of TFNN.com. Even if they weren't, we'd be talking about this because as traders, as active traders, the landscape is changing, uh, and it's already changed forever. But now you're going to get single stock ETFs. So Tesla, Coinbase, lead next single stock ETF wave. We got Direction, Granite Shares, each debut four new products. The one they were talking about last night, I think, were Tesla having a 1.5 times bull. So you get one and a half times or 150% of the performance of Tesla on the bull side. And then they have a 100% bearish, as in you're getting a one-to-one -one bearish ETF that replicates uh, the inverse of e of Tesla's performance. When Dave Baza was on there talking about, he was talking about, you know, basically they see that, and of course you can trade that if you don't want to short the stock. That's one way to trade it as well. Now you're going to have single stock ETFs that you can just go bearish in. Uh, maybe you can't stop short in the account that you're in. Then you also just have the fact that maybe you don't want to sell a longer term position and maybe you're a bull. Maybe you don't want to ride out a volatility of a specific earnings event, maybe any event, right? You're able to go bearish on that. Uh, yeah, so they're going to be going to market, single stock entrance, and there you see. So direction, they've got the 1.5 bull and the one bear, same thing uh, for Apple, 1.5 bull and one bear. Granite, they have a 1.25 long Tesla and they have the one short. So this is going to be interesting, right? They're, they're trying to be first to market. Well, Direction has been a supporter forever, folks. And uh, we like to support them. And so it's going to be interesting to see who, who comes to the lead there when you got two exact 
identical. I mean, look at the short. You got a short Tesla daily ETF and you got a short de Tesla bear ETF, right? I guess the funds, the the fees could matter, but ordinarily it's just going to be who gets the most funds immediately first and then they have the volume and then that's where everyone goes. In addition to the funds they're introducing today, that's where these start today, Direction and Granite have a combined total of 36 other funds. There's no reason why they don't pop these out for every single equity that people like. Um, look at this. Yeah, Inverse Tesla. The Inverse Tesla Fund, that's AXS's ETF, is evidence of the popularity. Uh, crazy action. If you want to check out that interview, folks, head on over to our YouTube page. You just search TFNN on YouTube. You find our page, okay? And if you're over to our page... Just click on the video tab, and you can find every single video we do, folks, whether it's my dad's show last night. We got the live stream going right now. You segment out the interviews. We had my dad talking to Steve Rhodes last night, and then my dad talking to Dave Mazza. There he is. So there's their conversation about the single stock ETFs. If you want to check it out, head on over to our YouTube page. Uh, please subscribe. It's free. You get notifications as well. And after you do that, folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN because we got our man Basil Chapman tomorrow. He's doing a live webinar. It's five hours long, folks. If you've ever want to learn Basil's complete trading methodology and Basil's stress, folks, he has updated this class. This is not the same exact class that he has taught in previous five-hour sessions. Uh, we should all be learning all the time, just as Basil is. He's incorporating some new techniques that he's had. It's five hours. It's $295. You get his opening call newsletter, which is $149. That newsletter has 13 archive webinars that come with it. Please check it out on the front page, uh, and you gain access to the archive. So you can watch it as many times as you like. You get the newsletter for a complete month when you sign up as well. And Basil, as I always say, is a great educator, folks. Uh, it's not just enough if somebody knows how to trade. You need to be able to convey that knowledge to people, and that's a skill that Basil has uh, completely. And so that's going to be tomorrow. So today's your last chance. Sign up for that on the front page of TFNN.com. You'll get a booklet emailed immediately. You'll get signed up for the opening call, and you'll be signed up uh, to be in that room with our man Basil Chapman, kicking it off tomorrow. All right, jumping around to what else we have going on. Uh, so Kathy Woods, it was interesting. She was out saying that it's a recession yesterday, right? And a lot of people are. And, and uh, you know, whether it is technically or not, I think we're all aware of the, the action going on, right? Um the true definition, it has to be broad enough. Is it broad enough if, if you have 3.5% unemployment and 500,000 plus jobs added, um, if it's just hitting certain sectors? That whole conversation comes into things. So she's out there yesterday and she's talking about we're already in a recession. The way I see it is she wants it to be that the case because if we're already in a recession, then maybe we're going to start coming out of it. And we're gonna, if we're going to start coming out of it, what usually would happen is that the growth stocks get punished first and maybe they're the ones to lead us out of it, okay? So maybe her stocks would be the one coming out of it. Now, ARK's held up okay. You know, they're trading lower by 3.4% today. I'm going to talk about some of the equities they had yesterday. You were up 52 uh, just yesterday alone. But some of their equities, well off the lows. we still got some volatility, though, man. Check out Zoom, down 4% today. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. This coming Wednesday, August 10th, Basil Chapman will be hosting an all-day live webinar from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern Time, where he'll be presenting the technical tools based on the Chapman Wave methodology, a full in-depth course on his entire trading system. Over the five hours of live education, Basil will discuss studying and practicing entry and exit points, assessing where to add or subtract from positions, utilizing simple technical tools for holding positions longer, taking bear charts and adding notations, tools, and patterns, as well as identifying identifying three core formations that repeat in every time frame and much more. When you sign up, you get a chart booklet emailed to you immediately to start studying and you gain access to his daily newsletter, The Opening Call, a $149 value. The cost to attend is only $295 and the full five hours will be archived. Don't miss this live special event Wednesday, August 10th with Basil Chapman. For all the details and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com right now. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the Dow right now going positive by 26 points. S&P is just negative by six right now. Sorry, let me reset that chart. There we go. Trading at about 41.35. NASDAQ 100 trading lower. You're negative by eight tenths percent. Let's see how those FANG stocks are trading right now. You get Apple shares. They catch a little bit of a bid. You're only negative by two tenths percent right now. We jump over to Microsoft shares. Two tenths as well. Tesla down 1.5%. That's a little bit of an acceleration for you. Let's see how Amazon's trading right now. Down 1.3%. Some of the airlines, Americans lower by 2.2. Delta's lower. Let's see how Disney's trading ahead of their earnings. Disney's trading about 108.50, down about a half a percent. Some of those ride hailing companies uh, or, or gig economy is a better way. How about DoorDash, man? I was checking this out early this morning. They're up to 100 bucks on their earnings, right? The next day they give it all back to 80 and you're already down 10% from there. You are more than 10% below where they came into their numbers, man, on Thursday. There were supposed to be some bang out numbers on that first move. You pull up the daily, excuse me, and all this is is nearing its lower end on DoorDash, about 68 bucks you'd look to on that equity. All right, jumping around to some of the articles I had pulled up here, talking about home prices again. Consumers home price expectations moderate further. That's the New York Fed survey. Consumers last month said they expect home prices to rise about 3.5% in the coming year, down from an expected change of 4.4% a month earlier and 6% at the start of 2022. So almost cut in half from where you began 2022. But if you only thought housing prices were going up 6% at the start of the year and they've continued to accelerate, I mean, what have they gone up already from January to August, right? Right. Uh, there's your deceleration, though, in terms of optimism. Where are we back to? We're back to basically pre-COVID levels. Measure of expected change. This is just expected change for consumers, okay? But it's a consumer sentiment uh, across education and income groups, marking the third straight decline in the lowest expected growth since November of 2020, just off the levels that we had coming into that number. Average 30-year home, 30 year home, yeah, just under 5%, the home data in terms of the mortgage data, I should say. All right, this article I wanted to touch on because I've talked about the gambling sites, right? DraftKings, Penn Gambling, we take a look at these equities. Online gambling is around forever, folks. It's never going away because there's going to be tax money, money tied to it. Uh, hopefully, Florida gets their act together, and hopefully, online poker becomes something that is legal as well, folks, because if you're letting people bet on sports, that's pretty much an unbeatable game because the Vegas is so high. Uh, why aren't you letting them play poker where it's a beatable game? It's a skill game where you actually can beat the rake. Okay. Now, poker could raise the rake high enough that no one could beat it. You could. 
But that's not how the game works. Then no one would play it. People play poker because it's a skill game. And if you have, if you make better decisions in the long run, you will have a better outcome and have a higher expected value. Okay. It's a very statistical probability game. Uh, and the bummer about poker actually is that we're getting into the realm where there's a lot of things that almost get solved. I'm digressing a bit, but I love the game of poker. It's a skill game, folks. I grew up playing chess. Chess is an outstanding game as well. Um, you can basically go bet on chess if you want to. When I was in high school, I would go, I would sign up and I played chess tournaments, all right? I was good enough that I could play a chess tournament, but I wouldn't be in one of the top divisions at all. The cool thing about chess tournaments is that you get a ranking. You play enough games, all right? That ranking comes from who you beat and who you lose to. Then that ranking determines what division you enter on a chess tournament, all right? But that entry costs money, and they had cash prizes. So it's basically a tournament, right? You're entering with cash. They've got a cash prize for a chess tournament, right? It's a skill game. You're allowed to bet on skill games. Where poker gets weird is people say it's a chance game because anybody can win. Um, but that's a very weak argument, folks, um, in the context of the actual game in the long run. Knowing enough players, you'd be amazed at how consistent over an, a large sample size certain players can be at winning even at very high stakes even where they're playing very sophisticated players that understand the game to a very high degree some players just understand it better and if you run the simulation enough times right their advantages will win out but boy you got some big time variance in the short term on any type of thing like that nonetheless back to the stocks DraftKings, you're up seven tenths percent today these stocks off the lows Gambling coming to Massachusetts. Interesting. You yeah, have Penn down 2.8. Uh, not sure what the digression is here. Just the general idea, though, that I want to bring up when I saw this article. So you have Jake Paul, the Paul brothers, not fans at all. Don't seem like very good people. That's just my opinion. Um, but nonetheless, they've built quite a social media following um, and quite a revenue stream to go along with that. And now they're going to get into the sports betting business, raising $50 million. Now, the one thing that's held these companies down so much, right, is that com it, customer acquisition costs are going to be very expensive. There's going to be a lot of competition. Each state is going to open up. There's going to be a vast competition for the members of that state, okay, as in the customers from that state that are going to become gamblers. And like many things, people were creatures of habit, right? If DraftKings gets somebody, you become comfortable betting using their app on DraftKings, right? You might be able to keep that customer. But what's going to happen, folks, is this is going to be a battle pretty much forever because they're not always going to have the exact same lines, right? They're not always going to have the exact same fees. There are going to be ways to compete with astute bettors at least, right? You get a customer, yeah, a lot of people, they get on DraftKings, sure, they'll stay there. They get on Penn Gaming, they get on the Barstool Sports app, they might just stay there. But there is the ability to compete by having different fees. But here's what's going to happen. Now you're going to have the ability of the influencers that they've been paying to promote their product are going to be competing with them as well. And boy, do they have a following. Now, Barstool's got it locked down, man. DraftKings is the big leader in terms of where they are in fantasy. And I'll tell you, folks, a lot of people that play fantasy football, probably a pretty good demographic for the people that might bet on football or sports on top of that. Okay. But this is a heads up in terms of there is no reason why. He just raised $50 million, folks. He's got three different venture capital funds, uh, Florida Funders, Alaya Capital, Fuel Venture Capital, uh, the final closing schedule this quarter, additional investors he's got in there, a few different, looks like gambling companies as well. What else does he have? Travis Scott, Richard Sherman, Des Bryant. Remember when Travis Scott, wasn't that McDonald's? Didn't they have a deal that blew up because of Travis Scott? Okay. How are these companies going to compete when you got just basically five guys with a huge social media following? They're going to start a site and they're going to they're going to they're going to take some of your competition. And he specifically says sports betting companies have relied upon young celebrities to push their products for years to attract more Gen Z gamblers. They want the young gamblers, man. They'll have them forever. Uh, so guess what? They're going to try and do it on their own. They're paying me millions to promote their sports book for my fights. He's got 70 million followers across social media. They need the influencers. Now it's our turn to take over from the dinosaurs. Well, he puts it pretty lightly. Good luck competing with DraftKings. Uh, good luck competing with Barstool. Good luck competing with, remember, didn't Disney come out, ESPN, saying they might just uh, lease, basically, the rights for the naming for an ESPN sports betting app? All that's going to matter. But think about that. ESPN sports betting app's not even on the market. What's going to happen to DraftKings? 
or Penn National when ESPN sports betting app gets licensed to somebody for billions of dollars and they're not the ones? Or what if they are the ones and they pay too many billions of dollars for that sports app? It's a tough, tough market. Um, you know, seeing that pop up, they got another competitor now. And the Pauls, man, they know how to promote. You cannot deny that. Built a following. And, uh, boy, they know how to monetize it as well. All right, folks. Dow's flat. S&P's negative by 8. NASDAQ's negative by 112. Stay tuned. I'll be right back to finish up the program. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Dan at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets with a little bit of negative action right now. You're looking at S&Ps, negative by 18. NASDAQ 100, now negative by 1.2%, 13,225. Uh, 13, we get that CPI number tomorrow. Keep those fingers fast, folks. It's going to be an important number, uh, and we should all be watching if you're in this market. Jumping back to some of the action this morning. So taking a look at Oxy. Okay, I was jumping around to some of the stocks that are moving. First of all, a lot of negative action. Novavax, they tanked because they're not expecting to make any more COVID-19 vaccine this year amid soft demand and a supply glut. Okay, not what the market expected. They're down huge. GoodRx is up huge. Uh, better than expected results. They, issue, they, they solved a big issue with the major grocery chain, and that's a big issue when you're talking about grocery chains and pharmacy. Okay, 
but a lot of negative action. So Micron's spending $40 billion on chips. They were lower on their numbers. What are they down right now? Yeah, Micron down 4.4%. I'm just flying to get through all this. Take Two's down 3.4%. Uh, Signet, they're buying it online. Upstart's down 12%. The car companies, car gurus and vroom, they're down 15 and 12%. SoFi's down 3.4, but I want to look at Oxy real quick. So they're higher. Berkshire's got more than 20% of the company. They can record part of their profit as their own now. All right, but be careful of Oxy, man. Oxy is almost at highs right now. Take out that little acceleration up to 74. You're trading right now in Oxy where you were trading March 23rd and just off where you were March 10th. March 23rd and March 10th. Remember those days. March 23rd, crude was at 115. March 10th, it was at like 140. Crude right now is trading where you were February 4th. If Oxy goes back to where you were February 4th, folks, where are you going back to? 40 bucks, okay? Uh, don't get in too late if Buffett's already in with 20%. Probably a great stock in the long run, but just an important comparison. Folks, check out the front page of TFNN. Go sign up for Basil's webinar. You won't regret it. 295 bucks. You'll have five hours of education tomorrow. If you can't attend it all, it will be archived. And our man Basil, he's coming up live next. Stay tuned, folks. Have a great Tuesday.